I encourage everyone to check out Dario Diaz's build. He's doing a, uh, a Ventador SV, but he's using a electric power plant out of a Tesla. He just started his channel. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's a fascinating build. I really encourage you. Dario is the one who built this beautiful blue Aventador. Uh, you've seen pictures of it before, but uh, here's a picture of, of the, the build that he had finished. It's going to be phenomenal. This episode's about doing the radiators and the clutch master cylinder. Now, the clutch master cylinder doesn't sound like such a big deal, but you've got to have a, uh, basically a remote fill on it. So I'll go through and show you how I did the remote fill. And then we'll talk about the radiators. Uh, here's a little diagram of why I choose the radiators that I did and their capacity. Um, a little bit of difficulty with the fill neck on one of them, which I had to cut off and put in a bleeder valve. But that's, everything's mounted up now and should be good to go. Okay, installing the clutch master, this has to have a remote fill uh, where the body sits, and this is a picture of the Diablo. Now, what this takes is a Wagner F113830, and it's important because most of the modern ones have just a sleeve that clamps on. Now, this one There's a nut in there, and that means this bowl can be removed. And then I can use a hose to extend it. Also, the rod here is too short. This has to be extended by 1.54 inches for it to hook up to the clutch pedal. So we'll start working on that. Okay, now with the extension on, I've got two 3 8 by 5 16 fuel line inverted flares. One goes in here, which replaced what was in the bowl. One goes in the bowl, and then it'll be connected by this uh, hose, high pressure hose. So now I just have to figure out where to mount the, well, Put the clutch master in and then figure out the mounting place for the reservoir. Okay, installed. Still need to disassemble it and paint the brackets. But clutch master there. And the reservoir is definitely higher than the inlet. So that should work. Okay, my decision on radiators is because I'm using the NARC chassis, at least the rear half of it. I've got 18 inches that I could put my radiators in there without having to modify the framework. And I know that Dario used the Honda Civic radiators on his. So I, I looked at those and I found some Honda Civic radiators with uh, four core, four core radiators that should work for me. Now, if I take the core dimensions of those radiators times two, that gives me 388 square inches of surface area. Now contrast that with a Corvette radiator, a OEM radiator, that has 428 square inches. So I'm roughly 40 inches shy. Um, I'm hoping because these are four core and they have the fans on the back that that will give me enough cooling power. Um, I know radiator, I know heat is always an issue with these cars, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get by with these four core radiators. So I made a frame for the radiators, 
but I have to be able to remove the radiators from the frame. So to do that, I've got this tab here, which has a bolt that goes through one of this little plate. Tab comes off. That allows me to lift it up. And the two legs go through the little dowels go through it here. And now I can lift it out and remove the radiator. Okay, <clears throat> got the framework around the radiator, set it in temporarily. And I picked these, they're basically a Honda Civic radiator. They include the fans, the shrouds, they're four core radiators. And if I recall, the cooling area is about the same, the two of them combined is about the same as a Corvette. So, and these will fit nicely in here. No will have room or good airflow into the radiators from here. So hopefully these will work. Okay, here are the components for the radiators before mounting them in the car. We've got the frame built there, which will be removable. And then you have the radiator, which will fit into the frame, which is also removable. And let me show you what it looks like in the car. Okay, here's the frame bolted into the chassis. There's a bracket up here, and that's bolted there. And then down here, there's a bolt that goes through and holds it in. Then this makes it very, very solid. Now we'll go ahead and put in the radiator. Okay, now the radiator's put in place. This tab up here on the top allows me to take this plate off, then it will just slide out. So all we have to do now is repeat on the other side. And so from the front, there should be good airflow going in there. Now, side two. Okay, I got the frame in, which is good. I really should have tried the radiator first because now the cap hits the bar. I want to have a remote fill on these anyway, so I guess I'm going to have to cut the damn cap off and plug it. Oh well, always something. Okay, removed the filler cap, put in a bleeder valve. Uh, haven't used my aluminum spool gun in a long time. Well, they're ugly as heck, but it should hold. Like many builders, I follow other YouTube channels. And I saw one the other day that was, this is from Chris on, on BS for Build. He talked about the building process and what he called eating the vegetables. And what he meant by that was you go along and you're building something, you get something done, but you get all these little things that need to be done, and those are kind of like vegetables. And to get the car done, you got to eventually eat the vegetables. Now, I replied to that and said, I understand the concept of eating vegetables, and I do eat my vegetables, but every once in a while, I get a Brussels sprout that I got to choke down. And I run into those I think I have more Brussels sprouts than vegetables, but you do what you got to do to get the car built. So, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you later. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would, and be sure and turn on your post notifications. Thank you for watching.